what is going on guys it is your average programmer here and today I want to talk to you guys about type constraints now type constraints relate to generics in C sharp they are very closely related and you can use these type constraints on these generic types so if you haven't watched my previous video on generic types I would highly suggest you go watch that video I'll be sure to link it down below because this video right here builds upon that video of generics instead of um, talking about just generics this time we're going to be talking about constraints that we put on generics in order to make our code uh, to more to our liking so let's take a look here at this website this website is tutorials teacher which is a really good website if you want to learn the theory or the behind the scenes of how certain aspects or certain classes in c-sharp works so as you can see here, we're going to talk about constraints. It says C-sharp includes constraints to specify which type of placeholder, to placeholder type with a generic class is allowed. It will give a compile time error if you try to instantiate a generic class using a placeholder type that is not allowed by a constraint. For example, if the generic class constraint specifies that only reference types can be used with the generic class, then you cannot use value types to create an object of generic type. Now let's see exactly what that means in our code. So let's say we have what instantiated few, few classes. So first our class is going to be, we're just gonna say Bob. I'll create a Bob class, person named Bob. And we are going to move that. We're also going to create a fruit and vegetable class as well. Public class root let's move that to another file as well and let's add a vegetable class all right so we've got three classes that we're going to be working with here we're going to be adding some more in the future so we've got this bob class right here and let's just say we're gonna have a property called public string name get and set just the name we're gonna keep it simple for now and we're gonna make this class generic again if you haven't seen my previous video it would be very helpful to watch it because again this video builds upon that video so we've got a generic class class named Bob, which is gonna take in a generic type. So, as we come over here, we are going to instantiate Bob. Let's say Bob equals new Bob. Let's say name is Bob. Bob. All right. And let's just say that Bob does not like fruits. Var Bob equals what's going on here? Generic type. Okay. We haven't passed in the generic type yet. Let's just say that Bob does not like fruits. So it would only make sense for us to pass in fruits to Bob and not pass in vegetables. So we're gonna create a constraint on the Bob class, which is a generic class, so that Bob cannot accept any vegetables because Bob doesn't like any vegetables and he only likes fruits. So let's just say right here where this is a keyword that starts off the type constraint where T is fruit so now we've added this constraint in the bob class to where we can only pass fruits so we can only pass the base class fruit or any fruits that derive from this class so you can pass in any kind of fruit you want and we're going to be creating different classes just so i can show you different examples of what i'm talking about so now you can only pass in fruits to bob so let's go ahead and instantiate these classes as well the fruit and vegetable classes let's say var fruit equals 
actually this isn't necessary let's create a few classes from this fruit that are going to inherit from this fruit public class let's say apple so we've created this apple class and for the vegetable let's create a class a vegetable class specific vegetable let's say uh, avocado so we've got avocado and we've got an apple so as you can see here we are going to pass in fruit to Bob and as you can see Bob accepts the fruit because Bob likes fruit and we've put a constraint on Bob to where you can only pass in fruits not vegetables so let's go ahead and pass in the apple as well the apple class as you can see that works because that is a type of fruit I must have spelled apple wrong sorry I didn't inherit I did not inherit from fruit that's why it says that fruit it inherits from fruit now so now when I go back I can pass it in because apple is a kind of fruit so the only reason it didn't work because I didn't inherit from fruit but now I put this uh, inheritance chain and now it inherits from fruit and we can pass in apple because apple is a fruit now on the other hand if we try to pass in the vegetable class it's not going to accept let's take a look at the error the type constraint dot vegetable cannot be used as a type parameter t there is no implicit reference conversion from vegetable to fruit meaning that we cannot convert this vegetable to a fruit because Bob doesn't like vegetables he only takes in fruits and that's exactly what a type constraint is a type constraint allows you to pass in specific criteria that you want your class to have so in this fruit class we can declare any kind of variables we want we can say what kind of fruit we can have the color of the fruit whatever this allows you to constrain your class to a specific criteria this is what the type constraint is and again if we try to pass an avocado it's going to reject it because avocado is not a fruit it is a vegetable and there you go that is the basics of type constraints I'm also going to be talking about reference type constraints and the new constraint in uh, the next few videos so be on the lookout for those I just wanted to give you the basics on this just because it's a little bit advanced and I want you to understand in the simplest way possible what type constraints are so this is what type constraints are and again I'm going to be talking about the other kinds of type constraints in the next few videos if you liked it be sure to hit a like and if you want to stay tuned for more be sure to subscribe i hope to see you all again in the next video peace take care